Hey what's up I'm Adam if you're new and if you're returning then you know what's good. Today I want to share my journey from being completely non-technical no computer science degree into being a full-time site reliability engineer maybe you've not heard of that term it's adjacent to kind of like DevOps engineers and basically being in the tech space right writing code programming being in the cloud from studying geography and how it's possible for people who have no experience or didn't do a computer science degree to get into tech, right? It's such an exciting time. Technology is moving so fast, it's, so, it's dynamic, right? It's changing all the time. And in all fairness, it's an employee's market right now. The demand for technical workers is a lot higher than the supply. Let's just get into it. As I describe kind of each of the steps, I'll also share some tips and things that I think helped accelerate my career. Um, and get me to where I am now faster than maybe if I hadn't done these things. So where did it all begin? Well, I studied geography at university, at UCL, and it was a great experience. I loved my degree. I l always loved geography and the idea of getting to learn a lot, um, or a little about a lot. And so it was a fantastic three years, but I wasn't really exposed to that much programming or technical work in all fairness i dabbled a little bit in matlab and r but i definitely didn't learn any development principles i wasn't learning python or how to develop with java nothing like that but the little bits that i was exposed to kind of sparked an interest i was like oh even though right now i'm kind of just like copy and pasting some things and seeing something run or seeing an output i was really quite intrigued by the fact that you could just do this like you could write a piece of code and it could give you an outcome and you can design that how you want and so that's kind of what sparked my interest but like I said I graduated with what is considered a humanities degree right geography even though I'm, I did do physical geography and so I'm like I have a BSc but anyway so after that I did three months of a master's in environmental engineering but I didn't find I was all that interested in it, it like you know what? this isn't for me it's not for me I wasn't learning technical skills like I wanted to or like I thought I would be so I thought it's time for me to maybe veer away from university and go down a different path which leads me on to the next stage which was kind of self-teaching or at least exposure to programming to different languages and to the tech industry as a whole so i decided that i was going to learn to code and i found code academy which i've spoken about before but it was a great way to introduce me to the world of tech if you'd like or programming and i was able to choose from all these different pathways and kind of progress through them and they had like tutorials they had the explanations they also had the ability for you to try out the code and you know see like learn about it and try it and um, it was a great way for me to pick up some skills but again by by no means did i finish as a developer like in those few little months that i was just testing out things dipping into a little bit of web development a bit of python like i kind of had a basic understanding of some principles but again nothing crazy but again my interest was sparked and i wanted to learn more i wanted the opportunity to get into this space and get into the nitty gritty of this and become somebody who does this for a living my tip for this whole kind of first section of my journey would be to seek out information regarding the tech industry but also regarding more specifically what you're interested in so if you think you might want to be a software developer or you might want to be a devops engineer or whatever it is a cloud engineer learn about it right what kind of technologies are being used what's the direction of that particular you know section of the tech industry where is it going who are some of the big names in it um and what can you start doing from a very early stage in your career to help propel you along your career path get involved just seek out that information and start like start before you try anything else before you think i've got to go back to uni and do anything or join a boot camp or anything like that Try it out for yourself. So the next step, it's clear at this point that I have an interest in tech. Um, it's maybe even been about a few months of me with Code Academy and just the other things that were going on. And so I thought, okay, what is the next step for me? I don't necessarily want to go back to university and, you know, spend a year maybe doing a masters or however long it would take me to do that. Um, I might not necessarily want to fork out however many thousands it is for a boot camp. Um, I don't know what it is at the moment, but I know they can run pretty expensive. Like, I think I saw some that were the cost of like a degree for the year. So I was like, no. Um, <laughs> so what I did actually do was I sought out 
apprenticeship style thing so like jobs that would train you up um and then you would work with them for a while and that's exactly what I did. I got a job with a company that trains you up in particular skills. I was on the cloud native engineer pathway, which was the perfect pathway looking back at it for me. And that's how I kind of got my foot in the door, like the first solid foot I would say in the door. One thing I do actually love about tech is that it's very objective. Like, I don't know how much people care about did you do a computer science degree or not, not that I'm saying that, that can't help, or particular what university you went to or anything like that. It's kind of like, can you do this? Can you write a script that does this in Python? Can you develop with Java or whatever? Do you understand how to deploy an application in the cloud? Like there are objective measures and if you can do it, you can enter this industry, right? Like you can get a career or are you even open to learning about these things? Do you have the tenacity? Do you have the drive and the capacity to learn new things and learn quickly? And if so, tech is for you regardless of what you, um, what you studied at university or if you went to university at all. So in this period, my like training period is about four months, I learned how to develop like a basic application with Java, front end was JavaScript, like HTML, CSS, things like React. Um, but a lot of the focus was on deploying applications, things like provisioning resources, with Terraform, Ansible, being in the cloud like AWS, GCP, and all these things. It doesn't matter if you're not familiar with these terms, the more you look into it, the more familiar these things will become. And so that's kind of how I got upskilled like say in all of these things and became knowledgeable in those and I had a portfolio on my github effectively where I'd been doing projects along the way as part of this training and that was really key right because that was of course my my proof of ability to that point like you're saying you can do these things but we have no evidence of this well, actually you can just go and check out my github where I developed that application or where I deployed this application using these technologies and so that's one thing I would say, start on projects um, as soon as possible and have a GitHub or whatever repository you choose to use um, where you can store this and spend time making sure that you have a good documentation surrounding it and showing that you would fit well into this industry, right? Like you're willing to learn, even if you don't know everything, the point is not to know everything at once, right? And People in tech will tell you all the time, you're always Googling, like, there was a meme I saw the other day and I had to laugh. I think I'll insert it here because it's so accurate. <laughs> And I think a really important thing that I did is I spent a lot of time outside of my class hours kind of building my projects and making them the best I could. And I would really suggest anyone who's either in a boot camp or anything like that, or even if you're at uni, whatever, is putting in that effort, that extra time, because if you want to accelerate your career, then it's going to take an investment, like it's going to require you to invest something up front. And at this point, it's time and energy. So we've got to the stage now where I am skilled and I have the good level of understanding of some key concepts. I'm experienced in development, not necessarily obviously an enterprise in a company, but I've shown that I can do certain things and that I understand how technologies work, right? Like I understand how to use Terraform and how to write um, a playbook with Ansible and things like that. So the next step was getting my first job. And I was, like I said, with the company I worked through, I got my first job through them. So that's kind of their pipeline. And this is the thing, a lot of companies will either train you and like, kind of contract you out or their in-house training and they want you to be you know working for them because like I said the supply and demand there is a real mismatch right now and so even if you don't have the skills but you have the drive and you're sure you're willing to do it people will take you on companies will take you on like it's a mindset thing at this point so my first job was in the finance sector which was great like I mean I cannot underestimate or really undersell how important that was to me and how lucky I kind of felt to get my first job in finance because it opens a lot of doors working in finance for me was it shows that you can handle certain levels of sensitivity um and kind of governance and frameworks that are embedded within the financial industry and so it opens a lot of doors after that but regardless if you're going to get a job whatever job you get you're going to get hands-on experience and that is actually the most important thing right you have hands-on experience doing whatever it is you're doing in this case it was 
site reliability engineering you could be devops it could be software development whatever it is and honestly i got stuck in straight away from day one i was volunteering for like big projects and putting my name forward and like and hey i know i'm new here and i know i'm coming from a boot camp style training thing but um i'd really like to be the second like engineer lead engineer on this project and I was so lucky that I was in an organisation that really wanted to clearly upskill their, their employees and give opportunities. And so I was able to get on those sorts of projects from the start and build my skill set and build my connections within the company very early on. And that was a key thing. And so, like I said, the tips, get involved from day one as much as possible. You'll have like a little training period most of the time or understanding the company and things, but get involved where you can and like people know where you stand like they know what you're coming in at so if you're coming in at a junior they understand that but you can still put yourself forward for things and they may say actually that's not right for you right now or they could say you know what actually we're going to give you an opportunity like we see you and we'll, we have like a particular scope where you know we, you can't mess up too badly <laughs> and so here go and try it another example of this is whilst i might have learned a few things in python like hello world and like how to do a graph or something i had no um experience using python to automate things especially automate things as they relate to the cloud and i was like yep i'm happy to take on this new task which involves me pretty much learning python to a usable state and automating some of this work for us and again that allowed me to quickly develop my skills and establish myself in the company as someone who's willing to put themselves forward for things and willing to try new things and willing to have a go right so another thing that i did was i started getting certificates very early on like i think it was in the first few months i had got my a cloud certificate and so i made it my mission to again not only have the skills but have the the backing behind it like okay you're saying you can work with gcp aws but uh do you have the certificate to back it and so, yes, that's a key thing I would suggest doing once you are in, put yourself forward. Your company is likely going to want to invest in you in that sense anyway. So if that's an offer and that's something you can do, do it. And if not, use your own money. Like a lot of these courses or a lot of these cert certificates may be a hundred pounds. I don't know what that is in dollars or 50, whatever it costs, it's an investment in yourself and your future, right? And it means if you go into your next stage, you have that proof there and then, right? Like people who are seeking out employees like you know, wow, well, she actually has the certificate already. She's been in there for six months, a year, and she's done X, Y, B, Z, and she's got these certificates to back it. And so where am I today? Well, I just got a new job, actually. Um, really excited about it. It's a new challenge. Um, it's a new salary. And <laughs> it's also a job that will allow me to work pretty much anywhere in the world. And so I can travel the world and do what I enjoy doing at the same time, make a living in the tech industry. And like, this is something, again, I would argue is a niche of the tech industry. Like, you can a lot of the time do your work from anywhere in the world, right? given that you're available the hours you're supposed to and so forth. If you can do it, a lot of companies will. Some won't and it'll be for regulation reasons or you need to be in the office or you know facing clients or whatever, which is cool. But you can seek out jobs that um, allow you to be remote if that is what you're interested in doing. So that's where I am now. I was thinking about doing a video on the application process and how I kind of got like multiple offers and was able to navigate those multiple offers in this stage of my career um, so leave a comment if you're interested in seeing that and in which case i can go into more depth on the tips and you know the advice for each step of the application process but that's it from me i hope this was useful i hope this was inspirational to show you that it is possible to go from like completely no technical experience and no cs degree into a full-time job in the tech industry as a devops engineer as an sre whatever it is, a software developer, whatever it is that you are interested in doing, tech is somewhere that is open to pretty much anyone, I'd argue. So I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video.